Hello friends, welcome back to my channel if you're returning. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Rachel and I'm a reseller on sites like eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari. And today I have a 90 day update on a Quick Lots box. This was a Quick Lots fashion box I purchased a couple months ago. So I'll go over what sold, how much it sold for, and if I would buy another one. So if that sounds good to you and you wanna hear, definitely stick around. So I've only bought this one Quick Lots box all year and uh, I did buy a couple last year and this is the one and only fashion box I purchased this year. This box cost $240. I think it was normally $300 and they had a sale which is why I grabbed one. Um, so today I'm going to just talk about what sold. After 90 days I had a chance to list everything and uh, at the end I'll you know talk about whether or not I'd buy another one. This one I don't remember how many pieces were in it to be honest with you. I ended up listing 27 pieces out of the box, uh, so it cost me $240 or approximately $7.50 per piece. If you enjoy reseller content, definitely consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. I love sourcing online to purchase merchandise to sell in my Poshmark, eBay, Mercari stores. And I always do the unboxing here on this channel. And then I come back 90 days later and give you the results and talk about if I actually made money. And if you find this content helpful, certainly hit that like button. That does help me out a lot as well. So out of this box, I have sold 15 pieces and I have 12 remaining. So what I'll do is I'll show you on the side here uh, the item that sold, some of these were eBay sales, and actually some of these sold very quickly, and I'm a little over the 90 days, as per usual. Um, so I don't have screenshots for everything, but I'll show you everything that I can. And then I'll show you what I still have left that has not sold yet. First up are these red cotton joggers. These were the brand Wild Fable, which I'm pretty sure is Target. And I was a little disappointed that these were in the box, but there was only just the one Target item and everything else seemed to be like maybe Nordstrom or, or things like that. But actually these sold within 10 days for $10 on Poshmark. So, I mean, not the greatest sale ever, but it was one of the first things to sell out of the box. So I, I guess I can't be mad. I mean, I, I recovered the cost of the item almost uh, just, by, just by listing it. I almost didn't because I'm like, who's gonna buy these? But they did, so hey. Um, then I had this red checkered dress shirt. The brand was Pennington and Bales, which I think is got to be some sort of like, um, you know, where they make like merchandise purposely in college colors. Um, this one sat for a while. It actually was, I think, the last thing to sell before I made the video. This sold for $13 on Poshmark. I didn't even take it out of the package. It was in like, you know, it's a men's dress shirt, so it was wrapped in like the plastics, and I didn't even take it out of the package to photograph. So, hey, I'm, I'm glad it sold. Um, then there was the Longline Sports Bra from Sweaty Betty. This was a $15 Poshmark sale. This didn't retail for super high anyway, so I didn't expect really more than that. So... So that's all right. Um, then there were these black pull-on pants from Karen Kane. Um, these sold within about five weeks, and that was an, an eBay sale. When I do get this brand, Karen Kane, it seems to sell a little bit better on uh, eBay than anywhere else. So, I mean, $15 is not like the best sale ever, but again, glad to see them gone. Um, the next two, I do not have screenshots for but there was a leopard print bikini bottom from the brand Becca. Um, these sold on eBay for $15.19. I think I ran a sale. And um, yeah, I probably ran like a 4th of July sale because they sold on July 1st. And I, I did a sale for the whole weekend. Um, so that's uh, probably what happened there. $15.19 plus the buyer paid shipping. And then the other thing was it was a, a BDG um, ribbed crop top. That sold for $16 on eBay as well. I don't have screenshots for those because eBay like deletes the sale. I, I can't see any of my sales past 90 days. Or I guess you can see them, but I don't have the screenshots anymore of the sale, which doesn't help me show you. So um, if you want, I will link the original unboxing down below if you want to see those. Um, but just so you know, those sold as well. Um, then we had the Robert Barraquette faded black t-shirt. I really didn't have high hopes for this because I have another shirt from Robert Barraquette that is like from, I don't know, I probably had it over a year and it's still just sitting in my men's box. Um, 
I don't like to keep stuff around here too often or for too long, but men's stuff, like I can't send it to thread up. So it kind of ends up just sitting here. Um, but this shirt actually sold right away within two weeks. This was an $18 Poshmark sale sold by offer. So I think the, the just that other shirt I have is like a one-off because I mean, this sold pretty quick. Um, then there was this cotton jumpsuit from the brand Caslon. I don't love the brand Caslon. I don't really pick it up. I, I don't pick it up if I'm thrifting or I don't seek it out. Um, but since it was in the box, I did go ahead and list it. This was a $24 Poshmark sale. I sent an offer that somebody accepted. Um, and this one actually only took three weeks to sell. Seasonality wise, I think helped on this one. You know, this is a very summery piece and um, it sold in the beginning of July. So that makes sense. There was a pair of frame jeans. I also don't have a screenshot for these, um, but they were a size 29. They were mini bootcut jeans from the brand Frame and they sold for $25 on eBay. And if I remember correctly, these were flawed. I think even though they were new with tag, they already had puckering in the crotch area or like on the front. Um, but I listed and disclosed just to see if, if somebody would still buy them. And they did. Uh, that's why it was only $25 though, instead of more than that. But hey, I'll take it because otherwise I would have just thrown them away. Um, the next sale was this white ruffle blouse from Reformation. And this was a $30 Poshmark sale. Um, this sold within two days. I think this was the first thing to sell. So $30, I think was reasonable considering like, I mean, it was reformation, but this was not the most earth shattering substantial piece either. So $30 was, was a fair price on that one. Then I had this black crossed, uh, like the straps were crossed. It was a tank top blouse. Actually, I didn't like this very much cause it was hard to photograph, um, I think I did end up having to use a stock photo. This one was a $31 Poshmark sale. And um, I think I listed it for 35 cent offers. And somebody accepted my $31 offer with discounted shipping. Then there was a blue floral blouse that I don't have a screenshot for. That was a free people top. It didn't have a tag on it, but it sold pretty quickly. It sold within three days on eBay for $34, which was Maybe I sent an offer. Or maybe somebody sent me sent me an offer. Um, and then, okay, last three, actually, just three more. There's the Karen Kane peasant dress. Um, this one took a little while. This one took about two and a half months, but it was a $50 eBay sale at the end of the day. This dress actually retailed for kind of high. So I listed it kind of high, hoping just to price accordingly. And um, I'm not surprised it sold on eBay. It did take a while, but I did get, I think, what my full asking was. So, so that's fine by me. And then the last two, significantly, like you, you could tell these are the two pieces that made the box here. Um, the first one, and actually there's a little story time about this one. Um, this one may have actually been story time in one of my top sales videos. This is the Tadashi, so, Tadashi Shoji. Uh, pink formal gown and this was a $120 eBay sale so this customer or they, they sent me an offer of 120 I think I had it listed higher than that they sent me an offer of 120 I accepted the offer they paid for the dress I packaged the dress up and took it to the post office and then the customer several hours later messaged me asking to cancel the order because the dress isn't going to fit so I told her no, because the dress already went to the post office and she went back and forth with me for quite a while, actually about, you know, she doesn't want it, it doesn't fit. And I basically was like, why did you pay for it? Why did you send me an offer, then pay for it, then wait like almost the entire day to let me know that it's not going to fit you. So I just told her she would have to send it back to me once she received it and I never got it back. And the purchase was made on August 4th. So we're 60 days over. Um, so I think we're outside of the return window. She can't return it anymore. I never heard back. So, oh well. Um, don't buy things that you don't want for whatever reason if you don't want them. And if you do, you know, I, I feel like I'm pretty generous, especially on eBay, to be honest, because I don't want um, bad feedback. I just, I don't. Bad, bad feedback hurts you on eBay. And so you kind of bend over backwards for people. Unfortunately, sometimes you have to. And um, 
so, I mean, I would have accepted it back if she wanted to send it back, but, um, yeah, don't buy stuff if you're, not, if you don't want it. Don't buy stuff if you don't want it. If I wouldn't have shipped it, I would have canceled the order, but you waited all day. So I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, the last and most, uh, or highest selling item in the box was the MacDougall, or it was, it's Aina, I think is how you say it, MacDougall long formal gown. Um, so this one took about five weeks, but this was a $189 Poshmark sale. And actually this one was all like strappy in the back. And then those straps had to be looped through like, you know, little holes on the sides and then it was backless. Anyway, I tried for like, you know, a half hour to like loop them properly through the little loops. And finally I just like wrapped them all, like tied them all together and put it on the mannequin just with like one little strap around the neck. And I was like, you know, the dress is new a tag, but the, the back is pulled out and you'll have to fix it. And someone still paid $189 for that dress. So that was pretty cool. Cause technically, I mean, is that really a flaw? Let me know in the comments what you think. Like, it, would you consider that flawed or just needs to be relaced? It's not really flawed. I don't know. I listed and disclosed and it paid off that time. Okay, so what I still have left out of the box, I have this uh, belted sweater from Topshop, which actually, my bad, this might be my fault. Maybe not because it's a sweater and I listed this box in the summer, but um, for some reason, this was only listed on Mercari. I did not have this on Poshmark or Facebook, uh, Poshmark or eBay, and um, my list perfectly showed like that it was listed on both Poshmark and eBay. So I don't know what happened. Honestly, I think if I remember correctly, I got a Vero on this one for eBay because I used a stock photo. So don't use Topshop stock photos, guys, if, you, uh, if you're a stock photo person. Um, so I think that's why it wasn't on eBay. And then maybe I deleted it off Poshmark because I was gonna like fix the listing and I never did. It's possible, but either way, I just today listed it without the stock photo on eBay and Poshmark. And so hopefully it sells pretty soon. Um, there was this button front shirt dress from Faherty. I did not know Faherty made women's clothing, but I do now. And um, this one is still here. It's gotten a decent amount of interest, but still no sales, unfortunately. There was a black one piece swimsuit from the brand Sea Level Swim. And I like this piece. I think it's a nice, like modest black swimsuit, but no takers and probably not going to be any takers um, being as we are in uh, fall now and maybe I'll get the spring break people who knows but um, it didn't sell during the summer. Then there was this black like faux wrap top from the brand Zella. This is a two extra small so I don't have high hopes for this either. Um, I, a few, few likers but again no buyers. Um, there's this blue cutout dress from the brand River Island. It's a super cute dress, but yeah, we missed the summer season for this one. So no sales here either. Here's another shirt from the Pennington and Bales brand, that college color brand. Um, yeah, I sold the one and this one's still here. Great oversized sweater from Caslon. Um, I don't sell any Caslon really unless it comes in a box like this. Maybe this one will sell though now that we're getting into the cooler months. There was this navy blue button front shirt from the brand West Zero One, which actually I learned is a men's brand, or at least this is a men's shirt, but it's not like, and no, none of the platforms has that brand listed as an option. So I had to put in a custom brand on all the different sites and um, it's not getting any interest at all. So I just, I, I guess it's not a sought after thing. Um, there's this red lacy dress. This is a size 6X. The brand is American Princess. Um, I have had a few people like this item or watch this item in the past couple of weeks. Obviously, as the holidays roll around, people are going to start looking for stuff like this more. So I'm hopeful that this one sells pretty soon. I had these silver metallic bike shorts. Uh, for the brand is BP. I don't sell BP usually, but I thought maybe these would sell based on style. So I just threw them up for $10, but no one's bought them. They're still sitting here. And then there's a pair of high rise 90s cutoff jeans from Lovers and Friends. I tell you what, I thought this brand was a bolo. 
and now I've had it either from liquidation boxes or like thrifted several times. I cannot sell this brand to save my life. I don't know what it is. I don't think I priced these super high for, for the name, um, but they haven't had any interest. So I don't know what it is with the brand. I feel like the, the, that brand and, and I have a curse going on or something. So anyway, that's everything that hasn't sold. So just to recap, I paid $240 for the box. Um, I've made a total of $307.06 on the box. When we're talking liquidation, uh, and we're talking like new with tag stuff that I paid up for, even though I guess I really didn't pay up. $750 is a little high for a lot of this stuff, but um, I would have wanted to at least double my money. I probably would have wanted to triple my money, honestly, on this one, just because um, it was a lot of like little onesie twosie kind of things. And, you know, they were, everything was different. It did take me a lot of work to photograph all this and everything. Um, and I have made $307 and six cents and 60 cents. So I have doubled my money. I made my 240 initial investment back plus an extra $307. Um, I have only sold off though about half of what I had listed. Um, I sold 15 and I have 12 left. So we're only about halfway there. Um, but the other thing about this box is that like I made my money back with two pieces, two items, and the rest of it was like nickel and diming. So was it a good box? It wasn't terrible. Um, would I order another one? So based on the results of this box, yes, yes. Based on the results of this box, I feel that the profit I made, the profit I have yet to make on the stuff that hasn't sold yet, um, and the cost was all line up with, you know, what I want for my business model. So based on that, yes, um, I did. And, and if you've been watching my videos, you, you would know, I, um, I had a little issue with quick Let's customer service. Um, I emailed them because I wasn't happy with the box. Um, after like four emails, they finally responded to me and were like, basically like, we don't care that you're unhappy. It is what it is. And um, for that reason, um, I won't order from them again. So I have this 90 day update and then I have two quick lots, um, original mystery boxes to do updates on. And then it is not likely that I will order from them again. Um, I've done okay with their boxes, but not so good that I wanna put up with poor customer service because um, the box I wasn't happy with, I still listed everything hoping to just make my money back, which I'm not in the business to make my money back, especially if the item's not what I expect it to be. Um, but I probably would not just outright give them my money again, unfortunately. Now, based on this box, if if you're comfortable with ordering from Quick Lots, I would say this box is, is fine and in line with what I would normally say is a box I would order again, just for that reason, I would not. Let me know what you think down below. I would love to hear your opinion on this box or if you're surprised by the results. And uh, make sure you're subscribed if you wanna see more 90 day updates. Got lots of unboxings and lots more 90 day updates coming up this month. I I feel like I'm, I'm starting to not be able to keep up, I'll be honest, but I've got them coming for you guys. And uh, hit that like button on the way out. That really helps out my channel a lot. That's it for today, friends. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.